he is not alone. Hi everyone, and welcome to another marvelous video. Robots, androids, and AIs have been an integral part of sci-fi movies for a very long time, and the concepts still intrigue most of us. The world at present is witnessing the age of artificial intelligence, and needless to say, we all ponder whether the fate of the world is going to be ruled by machines. Keeping all of these in mind, in this video, we would like to dig into the iconic robots shown in sci-fi movies that have left a deep mark on audiences. They are not just chosen based on the violence in Index, but also on factors like intelligence and role in the movies. So, without any further delay, let us dive into our list of the 13 most powerful and iconic robots and androids in sci-fi movies. Let's begin. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. The T-800 Terminator Franchise First on the list, we have the famous T-800 from the Terminator franchise. According to the storyline, the future of Earth and humanity is on the brink of destruction as the artificial intelligence named Skynet has taken control of the planet. The only human resistance established and led by John Connor fought against Skynet and defended the last hope for humanity. At some point in the year 2029, when they were just about to take down Skynet, the AI planned a masterstroke. It created the first infiltrator unit T-800 to travel back in 1984 and kill Sarah Connor before she could give birth to John, thereby securing Skynet's survival. t 800 CPU was an extremely advanced and powerful one that contained all the details of human anatomy and physiology. It contained detailed descriptions of the basic training for soldiers, tactical ideas, emergency medical assistance, and sniper training. t 800 could also acquire knowledge and learn new things or skills. As the timeline of the Terminator franchise diverged, we got to see how t 800s adaptability quotient gave him a con after residing amongst humans. Another unique feature of T-800 is the strong, silvery metal endoskeleton hiding behind the muscular attributes of Arnold Schwarzenegger. The endoskeleton contained a microprocessor controlled, triple armored, hyper alloy combat chassis with frictionless bearings at the joints of limbs. This enabled fast movements and hand-to-hand -hand fighting capabilities. With the different installments of the Terminator movies, T-800 is evidently one of our favorites. And thanks to Arnold, every time we speak of Terminator, his character is the first to come to mind. Mecha Godzilla Godzilla franchise. Next, we have Mecha Godzilla, introduced in Godzilla vs. Kong, the 36th entry in the Godzilla franchise. As the name suggests, Mecha Godzilla is a mechanized version of Godzilla created by Apex Cybernetics Corporations to serve as an anti-Titan weapon and establish humanity as an Apex Predator. The primary goal was to kill Godzilla. The project was led by the CEO of Apex Cybernetics, Walter Simmons, and their chief technology officer, Ren Serizawa. Mecha Godzilla was an ultra-powerful weapon set up with the severed left skull of Ghidorah. Using it as a living computer, it was wired to establish a telepathic link with a pilot controlling it. The pilot would sit inside the skull of Mecha Godzilla, and with a piece of Ghidorah's DNA in the android monster acting as a receiver, the pilot could control all its actions remotely. When the entire project was completed in an enclosed apex facility in Hong Kong, its first test run was against a skull crawler known as Number 10. As the skull crawler was released, Mecha Godzilla, piloted by Ren Serizawa, grabbed the Titan and sliced it in half using a red energized beam emerging from its mouth, also known as the proton screen. However, there was one issue holding back the man-made monster, and that was a limited power supply. Walter planned on harnessing the energy from Hollow Earth and overcoming Mecha Godzilla's limitations. However, when he succeeded in acquiring the energy, it had an unexpected result on Mecha Godzilla. It caused the remnants of Ghidorah's consciousness to override the controls, making it go haywire. In no time, Mecha Godzilla killed Walter while Ren Serizawa was found electrocuted. Meanwhile, Kong and Godzilla were engaged in a brutal fight in Hong Kong. After destroying the Apex facility, Mecha Godzilla raced to fight the Titans. It first engaged with Godzilla and overpowered the King of the Monsters. Mecha was about to kill Godzilla before Kong intervened. The combined efforts of the two Titans barely managed to hold ground against Mecha Godzilla. Finally, the tables turned when Josh Valentine poured some of Bernie Hayes' alcohol on the control panel, causing a brief confusion in the machine. Grabbing the opportunity, Godzilla charged Kong's axe with his atomic breath, which Kong used to brutally dismember and decapitate Mecha Godzilla once and for all. Optimus Prime 
Talking about iconic and powerful robots, we can definitely not skip the leader of the Autobots, Optimus Prime. The story of Autobots and Decepticons is well known to all its viewers, and Optimus Prime is undoubtedly one of the most influential robots in mainstream media. Optimus Prime and his fellow Autobots not only showcased advanced and sentient robotic life forms, but also benevolent ones. Transformers were robots but with the idea of sentient beings. Like humans have souls, Transformers have sparks containing all information and their life force. Over the years, these robots have been inspiring innumerable creators for the sci-fi genre. In the current version of Optimus Prime, there has been a subtle shift in the persona of Optimus Prime from that of Michael Bay's Transformers movies. In Rise of the Beasts, we get to see his rage against Scourge after the latter killed Bumblebee. And in the climax, theaters roared in excitement when Prime killed Scourge. With all the benevolent nature and wisdom, Optimus is also considered one of the strongest Transformers, and his hand-to-hand -hand combat skills are impeccable. Robocop our next iconic and powerful robot is Robocop. The story of Robocop is set in a dystopian future of old Detroit, Michigan, where the uncontrollable rise of violent crimes has led to a massive crisis in the city with not many options. Detroit's government had made a contract with Omni Consumer Products, OCP, to fund and operate the city's police force. The privatization was not a very smooth move as OCP was not interested in rebuilding old Detroit, but in replacing it with a new modern settlement called Delta City. Amidst all the rising Turmoil. Detroit police officers Alex Murphy and Ann Lewis were after a crew of thugs fleeing a robbery that ended miserably. Not only did they fail to stop them, but Alex Murphy was caught and brutally executed by the gang's notorious leader, Clarence Boddicker. Later, Murphy's team arrived and transferred his remaining organs into a full-body prosthetic cyborg. Thus, Robocop was born. Robocop had highly enhanced reflexes along with superhuman strength. His speed was also more than any human, and needless to say, he had great control over firearms. Sentinels X-Men Franchise The live-action version of Sentinels was first showcased in 2014's X-Men Days of Future Past. According to the story, in 1973, Bolivar Trask was the one who came up with the blueprints of the Sentinel program and repeatedly made futile attempts to get world leaders funding for it. However, he never knew that Mystique had been tracking him and learning about his brutal experiments on mutants. During the Paris Peace Accords, Mystique arrived and killed Trask in the presence of more than a dozen military officials. This act not only made Trask a martyr, but also persuaded world leaders of the need for the Sentinel program. Mystique was captured, and Trask's scientists used her ability to adapt any mutant power to create unstoppable sentinels. The sentinels took down mutants, and later, in a span of 50 years, the robots evolved and turned the planet into a war-torn wasteland. Mutants and mutant empathizing humans were killed by the sentinels, leaving the surviving X-Men to hide in a remote monastery in China. The movie is set in a plot where the surviving X-Men managed to send Wolverine back in time to team up with Charles and Eric and stop Mystique from assassinating Bolivar Trask. She did make an attempt during the Paris Peace Accords, which initiated the government to let Trask proceed with the Sentinel program. Here, we got to see a primitive version of the Sentinels, who were soon taken into control by Magneto. At the end of the movie, Mystique stops Magneto from killing Trask, thereby putting an end to the Sentinel program. Bishop Aliens 1986 Hailing from the Aliens franchise, Bishop was a synthetic android crew member made to assist the Colonial Marine Corps. He served as an executive officer and even took part in the USS Sulaco's mission to LV-426's colony after all contacts from the previous visiting crew were lost. Despite being an android, Bishop was programmed to mimic humanistic reactions and also protect them. His advanced intelligence also allowed him to improvise his own reactions. Bishop was awakened from hypersleep during the mission to LV-426, after which he worked as a team medic and extended support to them. Later, when the mission went haywire, with most of the Mariners being killed and their dropship getting destroyed, Bishop gave his best to save the crew members. He successfully saved Ripley, Newt, and the injured Corporal Hicks before the atmosphere processing station exploded. Later, Bishop was ripped in half by the alien queen, following which he was again put into hypersleep for repairs. However, when the dropship ejected the survivors in an EEV, Bishop was incited, and as it crash landed on the prison World Fiorina 161, he was further damaged. When Ripley later recovered Bishop's remains and tried reactivating him, Bishop said that although he could be restarted and reworked, he could never be at the top of the line and hence preferred to be nothing. This was the end of Bishop, who will always be one of the most iconic synthetic robots in films. Interestingly, the creator of the android was a man named Michael Bishop. The Gunslinger, the 1973 American science fiction film Westworld. 
pioneered a unique idea of showcasing a highly realistic adult amusement park called Dallas, mimicking different timescapes of the world, namely the Western world, medieval world, and Roman world. While the medieval world showcased medieval Europe and Roman world showcased the ancient city, the West world showcased the old American West. To bring out the eras more vividly, the Dallas was filled with lifelike androids, and the Gunslinger was one of the most significant ones from Westworld. The amusement park was open to guests for $1,000 per day, for which they could either hook up with the androids for gratification, as well as kill them for thrill. The plot revolves around Peter Martin and his friend John Blaine, making a visit to Dallas, more specifically the West world where the android, Gunslinger, is of prime attraction. Gunslinger was programmed to instigate gunfights like that of the old American world, and would repeatedly die at the hands of the visitors and reappear the next day. Things ran smoothly until Dallas began running some technical problems, causing the androids to malfunction. Gunslinger began attacking the guests who had previously shot him with all ease. The technicians switched off the power supply, but the androids continued tormenting the guests with the reserved power they had in them. In the end, the Gunslinger died succumbing to the damages caused to him, but he does remain as one of the most unique robots ever shown in live-action films. R2-D2 and C-3PO Star Wars Franchise R2-D2 and C-3PO secure their place in the list without displaying any sophisticated human-like features simply owing to their portrayal in the Star Wars franchise. Starting with R2-D2, often pronounced as R2-D2, was an R2 series astromic droid manufactured by Industrial Automation. He was programmed with a masculine personality and could be summarized as a compact, smart, spunky droid existing for the service of many masters over his lifetime. The best part was that his memory was never erased or rewritten, and he kept the memories of all the masters he had served and experienced from more than any adventures. Despite having neither a face nor a voice, and communicating only through beeps and boops, R2-D2 expressed a multitude of emotions. He was brave, and played a pivotal role in saving the galaxy on numerous occasions. To sum it up, R2-D2 began his service as an aide of Queen Amidala of Naboo, following which he served the Jedi Knight Anakin Skywalker. Later, when Skywalker turned to the dark side of the Force, R2-D2 served Senator Bail Organa, and later, after 19 years, he played a pivotal role in helping the Rebel Alliance to destroy the Empire's Death Star. George Lucas, in one of his interviews, stated R2-D2 was his favorite Star Wars character. Moving on to C-3PO, he was a 3PO series protocol droid, designed and created by Anakin Skywalker. He was primarily created for etiquette and protocol, and was fluent in over 6 million forms of communication. Unlike R2-D2, the long years of experience made C-3PO develop a fussy and worry-prone personality, but even played pivotal roles in saving the galaxy on numerous occasions. The two robot pairs were the most entertaining android duo shown in the live-action sci-fi movies, making them iconic as well. Roy Batty, Blade Runner, 1982 Next on the list, we have Roy Batty from 1982's Blade Runner film. The plot of Blade Runner is set in a dystopian future in Los Angeles, where the powerful Tyrell Corporation created synthetic humans called replicants for labor in space colonies. However, things took a drastic turn when one of the replicants led a bunch of their kind and escaped back to Earth. This was none other than Roy Batty, the leader of the renegade Nexus 6 replicants. It is needless to say that Roy Batty was the main antagonist of the film and was a highly intelligent android. In a span of three years, after activation, Roy developed high endurance, superhuman strength, and a genius-level intellect. His speed and hand-to-hand -hand combat skills made him the most dangerous combat model replicant to have ever been created. He led a mutiny with five other replicants in hopes of returning to Earth and finding a way to lengthen their lifespan. Although Roy had difficulties controlling his emotional quotient, he was married to another replicant, Ermgard Batty. By the end of the movie, Roy dies as his lifespan could not be extended, and in his final words, he lamented that his memories would be lost like tears in the rain. HAL 9000 2001 A Space Odyssey 1968 2001 A Space Odyssey will always be considered an epic science fiction movie, setting the trend for all that we expect from sci-fi movies, which inevitably makes the artificial intelligence HAL 9000 fall into our list of iconic robots. Heuristically programmed, Algorithmic Computer, aka HAL 9000, was an artificial intelligence in the onboard computer on the spaceship Discovery 1. According to the plot of the film, HAL was activated on January 12, 1992, with Dr. Chandra being its first instructor, and it later became the main cause of the space journey crisis in 2001. 
Hal was capable of numerous functions, including interpreting and expressing emotions, lip reading, speech, and facial recognition, and playing chess. Throughout the movie, Hal can be seen preserving a soothing voice and calm tone. There are indeed no adequate adjectives that could define how much Hal's presence added brilliance to the movie, and watching the film can only help conclude why Hal 9000 falls into the list of iconic robots. Mark 13 from Hardware 1990. 1990's Hardware was a British science fiction horror film written and directed by Richard Stanley. It showcases a dystopian future where the nuclear war has transformed the Earth into a radioactive wasteland. All water bodies have dried up, leaving everything in a post-apocalyptic desert, and world leaders are finding ways of keeping the population in check for a longer span of survival for humans. One day, a wandering junk merchant found parts of a defunct robot and sold them to another nomad, Mo. Now Mo's girlfriend Jill had an interest in building skulls sculptures, and hence, Mo bought it for her. Jill kept the head, but little did she know that it was a self-healing military combat android built to kill humans and bring the population in check. As the film progresses, the robot head repairs itself and begins attacking Jill. This robot was later mentioned to be Mark 13. Locked up in her apartment, Jill struggles for survival and finally destroys Mark 13 after exposing it to the shower in her washroom. Mark 13's main weakness was water, and it was deactivated immediately. However, the film ended with more trouble on its way, as a radio broadcast announced that the government officials had approved Mark 13, and it would soon be mass-produced. It is a brilliant ending for a sci-fi movie, and Mark 13's wrath can be best understood in the final moments of the film. Machine Minch from Metropolis, 1927 Appearing in 1927's Metropolis, Machine Minch, or The Machine Man, was one of the earliest depictions of human-like robots in live-action films. Directed by Fritz Lang and written by Thea von Harbo in collaboration with Lang, Metropolis was an adaptation of Harbo's 1925 novel of the same name. There were limitations in the filmmaking owing to the lack of advanced special effects, and Machine Minch was better explained in the novels along with a suitable backstory. In the film, Machine Minch was shown as a metallic robot in the shape of a woman named Maria, invented and created by Rotwang. In the climax of the film, Rotwang states that his former lover, Hell, was not dead and in fact turned into automaton, Maria. The plot of the film is set in a world where the economy is split into two sections, the affluent managers living a life of never-ending luxury and the workers surviving on crumbs and working like slaves. The movie progresses with an inevitable resentment from the working class, which causes them to revolt. Machine Minch was destroyed when the city's riot burned it at the stake to his shock and agony. Rotwang died attempting to save Machine Minch. Despite having no special effects in 1927, Machine Minch became the template for future directors to develop the concept of humanoid robots in sci-fi films. DC Comics later evolved the character and made it into their own version called Mechanique. She was introduced in 1985's Infinity Incorporated issue 19. Later, in DC Elseworlds comic Superman's Metropolis, there was another interpretation of the iconic humanoid character called Futura. Machine Minch was also the inspiration behind the creation of C-3PO from the Star Wars franchise. Gort from The Day the Earth Stood Still, 1951. Last but not least, we have genetically organized robotic technology, aka Gort, an alien robot created by an interplanetary confederation to protect its inhabitants from all sorts of violence. The Day the Earth Stood Still is a movie that showcases the rising concerns of alien worlds over the use of nuclear weapons on Earth. The idea itself beats the odds, and it shows the growing concerns about violence on Earth and how it has become an intergalactic issue. The film begins with a human like alien named Klaatu, arriving on Earth to impart the wisdom of peace amongst humanity. As his spaceship landed on the President's Park Ellipse in Washington, D.C., national security gathered around it, all armed. Despite Klaatu stating that he wanted peace, one of the nervous guards wounded him and destroyed a device Klaatu intended to give the President. Following this, we get to see a large humanoid robot named Gort emerging from the spaceship without harming any of the soldiers. Gort pulverized their weapons, showcasing a small fragment of his power. Gort was was eight feet tall with fascist features. He had a visor that represented his eye. As the movie progressed, we got to see Klaatu learning about humanity while the world government was growing impatient concerning the aliens' arrival. It ended with Klaatu leaving Earth with a warning to curb their violence, or else Gort would eradicate humanity from Earth and save its atmosphere. Gort's presence was marked by his emotional demeanor, and as Klaatu explained, there are no limitations to Gort's powers. In most scenes, he stood motionless, and his ultra-powerful abilities can only be imagined from Klaatu. The character of Gort was loosely adapted from a nut in 1940's short story Farewell to the Master. 
Marvelous verdict. So, we have finally come to the end of the video, and we hope you have liked our content. Robots and androids will always be a desert in sci-fi films if they do not serve to dictate the plot. Tracing back to the roots, we can see how the ideas, concepts, and design have been evolving for years, and they will soon be doing the same in the future. Thank you for watching till the end, and feel free to comment about your favorite robot or android from sci-fi films. With that, we will be ending the video, and stay tuned for the next Marvelous video.